So there's this product called Genway that lets you do qualitative research at scale using AI interviewers. And I've been using it for Dive Club and I'm completely obsessed with it. But the website and the visual language could use a little bit of love. So naturally, I offered to redesign it from scratch for them. And I'm going to give you a little behind the scenes in this video. First, I'll show how I iterate and explore new ideas in Figma. And then I'll walk you through a little tactic that I actually haven't used before just to present my ideas and get feedback from stakeholders. So let's dive in. Whenever I'm designing a website, my process pretty much starts the same way. I have this Notion database that I've been building for years with all kinds of design inspiration. And I have a little tab for website inspiration here. And I like to just go through and pull out anything that matches the vibe that I have in my head or anything that inspires me that I think I might be able to use in some way for this new project. Then I pretty much just dump it all in Figma and make a big mess out of things. Maybe I'll even even add a little note about what jumps out to me. Like I think, oh, you know, maybe I'll represent this idea of insights as folders, basically just capturing any spark that I can use for this project. Typically at that point, I'll create some kind of an outline for just like the general content flow of the site. And this inevitably will change, but I find it's like really helpful for me to just think through the primary value propositions, the order that I want to tell this story, because the design isn't just about the visuals, right? It's about the message that we're trying to communicate and everything that I design in pixels should support this overarching narrative here. And so I take some time to just jot things down in bullet points and kind of use this as my blueprint as I'm exploring visual ideas in Figma. Now I'll admit I don't do much wireframing. Most of my really low fidelity work is either happening in writing or maybe it's honestly just happening in my own head. So what I typically start doing is just dumping ideas onto the canvas. And I like to iterate in a little bit of a different way. I'll actually just make a change to something and then duplicate it so it lives at the end and then just hop back in here and keep designing. So I actually design in a single frame at all times. And the reason I do that is because I have my monitor here and my laptop here. And I like to like really zoom in and get in the details on my monitor while always having a one X representation in a separate view on my laptop. So I can kind of see the, the full picture down here while getting into the details up here. And if I'm always treating one frame as the source of truth, it just makes it a lot easier for me to use two separate screens at one time, which allows me to go a lot faster. So what ends up happening is I just keep enriching one concept over here. And then by constantly duplicating my frames, I'm creating a little trail of all of my my different ideas and how they've evolved. And you can kind of see everything that I was exploring here as I got further and further and further into the concept. Another thing to call out is I waste no time defining my type styles and my core colors because I'm just constantly using them. I don't want to have to deal with hex codes. It's so much faster to really quickly apply styles. And so as soon as I type this very first H1 on the page, I create a style for it and I call it H1. And you can kind of work backwards from some of the core use cases to derive your type style. Like I haven't created enough websites where I know that this is probably going to be P1. I'm probably going to have an H4 and a P2 that are 16 pixels. And then I can kind of just fill in the gaps from here. So where a lot of people would look at this as the thing that you kind of do once you have the design figured out, I see styles like this as a way to move more quickly by minimizing the amount of knobs that I have to turn in order to make changes. So I spent a few days really just trying a bunch of different things for what the visual representation of this brand can be and just identifying different opportunities to streamline the existing site. And eventually I wanted to get feedback to make sure that I'm on the right track. Now I like to get feedback as Figma comments. So I made it very clear that that is how I wanted people to weigh in, but I don't want to plop a stakeholder directly into a prototype or even like a full Figma file where they can see the high level view of everything. When I'm sharing my designs for the first time, I want to do a good job of communicating my intent. So I tried something new. I created this cover component and it has two variants, one for 
when it's visible and the other when I've just decreased the opacity to 0% and I just wired these two up with a simple click event. And the reason that I did this is I wanted to be able to walk through the prototype page by page and talk about the intent for each section, really clearly communicating what my goals were and why I even prioritized it to begin with. Because even if they don't like the pixels or some kind of a visual graphic, I need to know if we're aligned on the high level goals of each section. Take this demo CTA section, for example. Before I show any pixels, I wanted to make it clear that all of this functionality that we're showcasing is being viewed through the lens of, hey, humans really like these AI interviews too. This isn't something that's just good for the business. Then after I give the context for each section, I can really quickly click to reveal the UI and section by section, I can walk people through the website, explaining all of my design rationales, getting into the details of all of the visuals. And it's kind of like this fun reveal process, right? Like it kind of feels cool and it almost builds up a little bit of anticipation as you walk down the page. So like I said, this is the first time that I've ever done it this way, but it really, really worked. And I'm definitely gonna add this to my tool belt as a web designer because it's really like kind of a nice way to showcase your work and create that polished loom that you can drop into Slack and get feedback on your work. So hopefully this helps and inspires some ideas that you can incorporate in your own practice.